Morning, everyone, and welcome to our Heavenly Parent Holy Community Oceania Hundake with Reverend Yataki Yamada. Today being Saturday, the 11th of December or the 8th of November in the ninth year of Chongul Gruk. So let's offer a bow to our Heavenly Parents and True Parents, Chariot, Kyombe, Haru. And let's recite our family pledge, both in Korean and English. Thank you. Kajon men se chil chon nikuk chuin uri kajogun cham sarangul chun shimago ponyone hyol tongwa yonggul den uihanun se hwal tohayo shimjon muna se gil wanso hal kosil men se hanaida. Family pledge number seven. Our family, the owner of Chongul Group pledges through living for the sake of others to perfect the world based on the culture of heart, which is rooted in the original lineage by centering on true love. I'd like to ask uh, Chris, if you could offer the opening prayer, please. Morning, everyone, let's pray. Good morning, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Parent, True Parents. We're so grateful to be here this morning. Father, you've really raised us up to mature past our expectations. From our own viewpoint, we seem to lack so much. But Father, you really raised up saints and sages and children that can really deeply understand true parents' heart, deeply understand your heart. So we're so grateful for that as we grow. You're developing, your inspirations grow inside of us every day. And that we know you're real because the inspirations we've had continue to live inside of us and grow and develop. We do want to come before you. We want to live lives that can allow us to be with you before we pass to the spiritual world. So everything we do for you, everything to return this world that you created to you so that you can experience the excitement and joy you had when you first created, as you saw things being developed. What an incredible understanding true parents have given us. Now we just have to believe like our true parents. We just have to have the faith that our true mother has. She makes statements that are shocking and reverberating to the people listening. But because of her faith, because she doesn't change, because she's unchanging, things change quickly, things grow, things come to life. Faith of a mustard seed is so easy to say, yet difficult to maintain. So Heavenly Father, give us belief in ourself that we can become unchanging from today so that you can allow all of this preparation to bloom in front of us. We have no more time, so we want to see results and we want to remain steadfast. So we're asking you to give us what we lack to be able to be those people so that we can see our communities grow with us. Thank you now and offer this prayer in the name of Chris and Debbie Bruce and his family. Adieu. 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 Thank you, everyone. And let's give a warm welcome to Reverend Yutaka as he shares this morning. Thank you. Good morning, our brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining today's morning from the K. Today is Saturday, the end of week. So how was this week? Did you meet? Did you experience? Many with many of our heavenly parents and true parents, and how many times we are thinking, and how many times we are awareing our existence of 
our heavenly parents. So today is also a good moment to reflect and also prepare for the new week. So let's put our sincere devotion in heart and let's begin together with our heavenly parents and true parents. So thank you for your support. So I will share uh, this poster uh, every day. So next Tuesday, we will have the PCLC second online fellowship. So just three days. So I will share at least show this poster every day. Please also pray and please think who can join this PCLC uh, fellowship. So we are trying to invite more and more. And if new person come, the new person will get some inspiration. So PCLC, our Christian pastor, and also ambassador for peace and a blessed family. If we can co cooperate the Trinity, this movement, this connection become bigger and bigger and bigger. So our Christianity, uh, clergy, and also the blessed families, uh, Chumbo, and also the ambassador for peace. So how we will prepare each meeting and each connection is also some preparation. Then finally, this become connected with others and connected to the society, nation, and the world. So we can expect and we can have a great moment next Tuesday. Uh, let's pray and join together, okay? So today, also, let's begin through uh, Three Mothers uh, Anthology and also uh, Chan Song Gyeon message. So yesterday contents we, asked, we shared about Garden of Eden, God's creation. And God's final creation was Adam and Eve. And in order for them to be perfected, God prepared and also God gave them of the growing period. So during growing period of time, how did they do the Adam and Eve? They continuously searching and growing and learning. We could see those growing period of Adam and Eve. And when we see about father's message, father said, God created only male angel. That's why when we see that garden of Eden, who were there at the time? When we see the Garden of Eden, there are five male and one female. Do you know who they are? Five male and one female. The male, of course, Adam, right? And God himself. Of course, heavenly parents, but also showing the male side. God and Adam and three archangel. This five male is there and one female, Eve, was there. So for God himself, Eve is actually his daughter. And also his daughter-in-law because Adam's wife. And also God tried to show his, his, himself through Adam. That's why Eve should be the wife of God. So Eve, him, Eve herself is not only just a daughter's position. Eve is also daughter. Eve is also daughter-in-law daughter and also the God's wife himself. That's why father also mentioned several times how much Eve's position was important. But the loss of that position, that moment was how much also the critical moment in God's heart. So Lucifer, and they could not overcome the challenging of uh, the la love and heart. So that time Eve have to distinguish those things. I research of also the father's message about a female angel. I'm not sure how many people heard about the female angel. So father said June 5, 2009 in Chonjongun. Father said, what should I do next? The angel were, angels are made of ma male angel only, and there are no female angel. 
Now there are many persons who committed the sexual sin or problem, and they are distributing the AIDS problem and to inherit to the children, and they will destroy the nation. That's why I will let them become the wife of uh, this is there is no text I'm just seeing the summary. That's why Father said, I will let them to become the wife of Archangel. So uh, it's not difficult to translate, but several part, Father is mentioning about the female angel and the male angel and to create the female angel. That's why one of the responsibility of Messiah and true parents is, of course, to give the God's word, of course, to restore the world to be the ideal world but also to create the female angel. So I could not find that there is some suitable message, but I try to find more and more. So if I could find from Chon Song Gyeong or somewhere, I will share again. So anyway, when we see the Garden of Eden, the archangel's uh, role and our human being's role. So Father also mentioned many times when we witness who we, who we should witness, at least the three spiritual children. We have to dominate them by true love, restore them by true love, because that was the original mission of Adam and Eve, original responsibility of Adam and Eve, to restore, to love and dominate by true love. If they could love and dominate by true love, then they could teach the perfect position and they could receive the blessing at that moment. So we could see how much important to witness three archangel or three spiritual children. That's why when we when when three parents receive the holy wedding, also three parents prepare the three couple first. Then three parents go to the blessing. That's why all things is connected and we ourselves as a breast center family, we have to learn and we have to follow that. That's why uh, through this message, we could remind again and understand again. So let's read the next, next page. The Bible tells us that God created one man and one woman. God, however, was unable to achieve his ideal and his dream. You have already learned from the divine principle the reason why God the omniscience, omnipotent, and omnipresent creator of all things was unable to interfere with the fall of Adam and Eve. His history has been a sorrowful one, for he could only carry out the providence to save foreign humanity indirectly. Even in this world, when one commits a crime, one is absolutely only after serving one's time in prison or paying a fine. Similarly, foreign people cannot come into the presence of God without indemnifying their sin through their own efforts. God's providence of restoration has had to go through such a sad process. There was God's ideal, there was God's plan, but that was not fulfilled at the moment. And even God, God could not interfere the moment or process of Adam and Eve's growing period. That's why this human history was continuously coming until this period. So what mother said, mother said in the God's providence, that foreign, foreign people themselves, foreign people ourselves also need to establish some condition. And without condition, we cannot, do, we cannot go back to the original position. So can you remind or can you remember when you met the unification movement first time? Do you remember that at that moment? Did you pay some indemnity? Or did you remember something happened? Some big things or big challenging happened to you? So even we notice or even we don't notice, we are paying indemnity. And when we witness young people or new people or spiritual children, also same. After 
they listen to the divine principle. Surely some problem happened. Suddenly, next day is the important moment, kind of the telling the Messiah or really giving the important moment, but suddenly some member of family accident or some kind of a, a injured or suddenly parents grab them or some friend try to stop them. Something happened. Ourselves also same. Now I determine to go to this way, to offer ourselves to be the full-time members or they are determined to receive blessing. But important moment, even we notice or even we don't notice those kind of challenging or really serious moment is coming, then surely we stood that moment. We should continue. Should I continue this way? Should I choose this way? Or should I go to this family way, compromise, or we will do, we will solve that, that problem fast. All the moment we are standing the important moment, but through overcoming. I think all of you, you are here. That's why maybe you choose several good choice. I can understand you choose the several suffering choice or challenging choices, but because of those indemnity condition, God could catch, God could hold us, and also we could reach that moment. So when we see our history, of course, God prepared, God guided, and God invested everything in order to restore our human beings with God's 95 possible responsibility, but in the same time, ourselves also, we need certain condition. Maybe our condition become lesser and lesser and lesser than before. Maybe early our elder family time or elder members time, our condition was difficult than current situation. Because of Three Parents Victoria's Foundation, uh, this condition become lesser and more lighter, but still there is some condition which are needed. So when we witness guided or the Christian pastor or heavenly travel messiah, we are as the representative of God. We have to fulfill kind of the God's responsibility for them. But each spiritual children or each person, our guest, they also have a some responsibility which they have to pay or they have to invest or they have to fulfill. So how God and ourselves cooperate and creating to the next step. So we could see now we are living in the special moment and the special the transformation period of the life. So let's really connect always with our heavenly parents and true parents will. If we face some challenging moment. That moment is actually most important moment. So instead of thinking only by own concept or our own thinking, always we have to be humble and seek God's will, God's way, and have to consider the God's point of view. Then we could see the next part. So mother sharing about those story in the mother's anthology. So let's see the Johnston Gyeong word today also. This is the last page. Ah. Ah, this is 36. Okay. So this is the Johnston Gyeong word. Yesterday we share about the original heart and the conscience. So we notice the conscience. Conscience is not only just teaching us the way where we should go and what we should do, what we should not do. God said, Father said, the conscience is actually the special place where God and myself can connect directly and we could create the unique relationship with God and myself. So I will read on this part. Let us imagine the world contained one treasure such that if it were lost on that very day, the world would turn upside down would you keep the most precious treasure on the surface of your heart or at the very center of your heart? I am sure you would keep it at the center of your heart. Still, you would not feel at ease. And 
you would wrap it up not only once but many times over. You would not want just anyone to walk in and look at it. So you would cover it layer upon layer so that others would never set eyes on it. So most precious things, if you have a most precious treasure, where you will put that? And also Father is talking about, you could have a special relationship with God. If you have some special moment, if you could have, where you will put? That's why God prepare those place in your heart, but not in the surface of your heart. God prepare the place to put the center of your heart. Then nobody can come, nobody disturb that relationship with God. The human heart has this kind of desire. If God were visible, all the di diamonds in heaven and on earth would pale into insignificance by comparison. Where would you house this God? The absolute being who is unique in the universe, who is, to, who is of infinite value, who is the infinite source of life, and who is priceless beyond the imagination. You would keep him in your heart. You would hide him where no one could find him, even after seeking for tens of thousands of years. So it is good that God is invisible. So Father is explaining about relationship, about the speciality, our uniqueness, and some secret moment with God and the relationship between God and myself. So how Father is explaining well. If God is, if God is visible, what's happened? If you are talking with God, surely another person can see about your conversation, right? And you are talking with God visibly, and maybe your friend is talking with God visibly. What's happened? Do you, will you compare, or are you interested in their conversation? Or you can ignore that? If someone is talking with God visibly, surely we want to listen, right? And we are consider, ah, this God, what God is talking with this person? And also another person also try to listen of your com communication and also involve or disturb. Maybe sometimes they will, they might compare. Well, God looks like God loved that person more than me. Why God? Why you don't love me more? Why you don't give me your message more to me? That's why God also, Father mentioned that. God is invisible. Actually, this is good things. So when we see our heart, not only just her heart is giving the guidance. Once again, we have to recognize this is the special place where we can communicate and we can have the special moment with God. And this is not only for our side. God himself also same. God want to have the one-on-one -on -one special single moment only with yourself. That's why how we can feel God's heart. God want to approach each of us and God want to talk some only one-on-one -on -one meeting with us. How we can understand, how we can comfort and how we will prepare for God himself to have meeting with me, to meeting with us. So this moment or this place is actually the grateful moment which God created for us. God is being without form. So the question arises, how can the incorporeal and the corporeal come together? How can the incorporeal world and the corporeal world become one? Logically, this is difficult to answer physical being cannot become the center that binds a spiritual self and a physical self. Then how can there be unite, u, unity between the spiritual parent and the earthly parents that is between God who is spirit and the unfolding human ancestors of the original standard who have a substantial form Father, the vertical and the horizontal have to unite, but how? 
it is through love. The true love between them, traveling by the shortest and most direct route. So Father is mentioning about the spiritual self, physical self, how spiritual and physical would be connected. This is totally different beings. That's why God and human beings, spiritual and physical self, how to connect. Father also said, this is not easy question or easy things, but how it will be united. Father said in the last part, it is through love, the true love between them, traveling by the shortest and most direct route. Only love can beyond the physical or spiritual and even any kind of environment. That's why how much true love is important. The relationship was relationship by true love. Love can be on the ages, love can be on the space. When we remind the moment which are felt love in our lifetime, maybe we receive many love from the parents in the past, right? And you have, we have a good relationship with our parents, the children, family members, or some people, we could have a great, beautiful love in the past. But now we can remember that moment, and my feeling and my mind immediately can return to meet that place. When we go to the spiritual world, we could connect all people by true love. That's why God created even spiritual and physical body are separated, but only love we could connect well. So I had some testimony. Some people, already some beloved one, the parents or grandparents already went to the spiritual world, but really wish to meet that person and really want to feel. That's why if they really feel that, spiritually that person come back and to talk with you and guide with you. Now, I, this month also there is a spiritual matching centering on champion, right, Reverend John? So this spiritual and physical, because we could not see, but even we could not see, but it's not, it's different story, whether they exist or not. The spiritual world is existing and the spiritual body or spirit themselves are existing. That's why now they are sitting beside of me, sitting beside of you, they are listening, they are guiding, they are also talking with you, how we can recognize our spiritual ancestors and spirit themselves. So that's why through love, even we separated already, our beloved one went to the spiritual world already. But if we have a connection by through love, if we have a connection with love, we could meet them, we could feel them, and we could also communicate and recognize with them. That's why the love is really important. So Father is mentioning even spiritual world and physical world is different, but we could connect only by true love. The next part I will read. The omnipresent God. God's heart exists not only in the world, but also in everything he created. God's heart is everywhere, throughout heaven and earth. Thus, we say there is nowhere that God does not exist. That is, God is omnipresent. Since God's heart is in all things of creation, if you want to be in his heart, you should embrace everything that exists in heaven and on earth as your own. So where is where God is existing? Of course, God is existing in our heart, but also God is existing in everywhere. Our heart desires to go beyond our people, the world and the all created things and be with God. In our heart, we are to go to the place where we can even claim that God is ours, a person who has such a heart is with God. So God is really staying everywhere. So when, when we meet the nature, of course, tree or plant, there is heart of God. And when we eat the food, also we could feel God's heart there. So now you are sitting on the table or you are using computer, 
Surely there is also God's heart. What do you think? Your things. You are using every time the spoon, fork, cup, dishes, food. Do you think there is God's heart or not? God's heart is also everywhere. God's expectation, God's hope is also everywhere. How can we be the sensitive? So True Father, every time when True Father visit the place, True Father could hear the voice of things. The thing, voice of growth and voice of also the natures. How are we sensitive? We have to be reaching that position also. When we visit that place, we sincerely pray and ask God, I came this park first time. I came to this ocean first time. God, what your heart is here? What kind of hope is here? Through this place, God, what you want to tell me? What kind of wishing you are wishing to each of us or human beings? When you go to the nature, even when you meet the people, also same. I meet this person. Surely God, you are inside of this person's heart, this person's original heart. How you are looking at this person? How much you are loving this person? Please let me know. I don't know this person yet. I don't know this person's nature yet. But surely God, you are loving this person. I want to love this person also same way as you are loving. So through communication, not only nature, not only things, even we meet the people. Surely God is loving person. Even that the person is a stranger, that person is a cross person, even that person is enemy. But surely God is loving that person. God is living together with that person also. So when we meet the people, how we can feel God's heart and God's wish together. So this is the last page today. How can we feel God's ubiquitous presence? We should feel the air as God's breathing. And when a storm hits, we should feel as if he were sneezing. When we see flowing water, we should perceive it as the sweat God has shed as he overcame his cause of suffering for the sake of the world. When we look at the sun, it should bring to mind the life elements of the entire universe and teach us God's love. God created nature as a textbook for us, his beloved sons and daughters, to provide us deep experience of his heart and bring us joy. So Father's expression, they are always Father try to connect and feel God's heart. If the strong storm come, but Father feel this is God sneezing, right? And we see the flowing water, we should perceive it as a sweat God has shed as he overcame. That's how always connect with God and feel God and really realize God's heart. So today we are sharing about mother's message and also Chon Song Gyeong Wat, how we will find God and how we will communicate and live together with God in the daily life. When we reflect today, when we reflect the past one week, surely there is the special moment with God and there is special guidance from God. We will realize, we will connect, and we will return back as a son and daughter of God. So thank you for joining today, morning devotion. Today also the beautiful moment already God prepared for us. Let's find and offer the victory and happiness to our heavenly parents and to the parents. Thank you very much once again. Kamsamida. Uh, thank you very much, Reverend Yataka, uh, for sharing uh, father and mother's word with us and that we can you know, really uh, understand more, more deeply uh, our two parents' heart. Uh, I, I was reflecting uh, about indemnity uh, this morning when you were talking about uh, you know, the, the price we had to pay to, to join. And I was reflecting uh, about that whole process. Uh, I, I've come to realize that it's, you know, indemnity is not a simple matter. 
uh, as we know, otherwise the world would have been restored a long time ago. Uh, and uh, and how much uh, God's preparation is involved in in that moment. Yeah, that I was reflecting about when I first joined and the, the moment and all of the circumstances around it. And the first thing I realized that God prepares everything, prepared the environment, prepared the fact that I was born, uh, that where I was born, uh, that my qualities and abilities, uh, education that I was given, uh, both by parents and society. Uh, th this brought me to a, a certain point and also uh, different personal stimulus, you know, where, where I met God at different stages in my life you know, that helped me uh, build and consolidate my faith. So I realised you know, how much you know, God is loving each and every one of us and every moment, but it's still our choice. You know, God has given us our responsibility to uh, choose God or not. And uh, and then I realised that in, uh, that that uh, you know, that preparation was made, and indemnity is this price that needs to be paid. But I realised that my ancestors pay it, my family pay it, myself personal uh, different uh, experiences that I had, like being bullied or having malnutrition as a child, uh, and and then there's the the moment uh, that that moment which is uh, uh, the decision time. And, and I realised that, you know, when I joined in Scotland and England and uh, I went there to uh, work as a roustabout on an oil rig, and when I was there, the oil rig collapsed and 200 people died. And that, uh, if that hadn't had happened, uh, I wouldn't have met uh, my spiritual father on the street. I wouldn't have been walking up and down the street. Uh, then my my brother was also there. Was already working on the oil rig, and and uh, thankfully he wasn't on it when it collapsed. He, he, they do two weeks on and two weeks off, so he he was on his off period, and so he was in Scotland. But he 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 was uh, 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 concerned that I was joining a cult, so he he found an ex member to come and and uh, talk to me. Uh, and uh, anyway, that was quite a, quite a, an, an interesting you know, situation happened there. And but you know, so many things happened. You know, my family went through World War II, uh, and that, that's why refugees to Australia and uh, uh, you know, uh, elder brothers uh, uh, or family members that had passed away during the war. This just so many complex things. I'm sure each and every one of us had many complex, when we think about it, uh, that bring us to that one particular moment. Uh, do I uh, commit my, because I, I had in my mind, uh, I, did, I didn't, uh, when I was deciding to join, I didn't have in my mind not to join. I just had in my mind, I'll join for two or three years or I have to commit forever. And that, that were the two choices that I gave myself when all this was happening around me and this uh, ex-member bombarding me with all of this uh, information. Uh, and, uh, and, and I was just thinking, well, I need to make uh, a choice for me, whether it's right or wrong, it really doesn't matter. It's my choice. Uh, and uh, and I, I chose to uh, join forever and, and I'm here and expect to be here. And you'll see me in spirit world here. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, that, that were my reflections on that that sort of thinking. Uh, thank you. And uh, I can see Doug has his hand up. Go ahead. <laughs> Good morning. Actually, oh, Mary. <laughs> covered many things this morning, but um, there's just one point I want to make. Um, Regarding the um, angels um, and fallen people, um, when True Father speaks to an audience, uh, many times he's sort of joking and teasing and he asks questions. And he might be talking about a particular subject 
and he'll make some comment regarding that. And if you're not there, and also sometimes he'll talk in English as well during that. And, and many times the text that's written afterwards doesn't necessarily contain the English um, aspect of what father said. Um, so I just feel that talking about the angels and fallen people, I think he was just sort of teasing or joking a little bit or just um, put, putting something out there for people to think about. But you have to read the rest of a speech or whatever to get the full context of what he was saying. Um, I don't yeah. know if Douglas wants to add to yeah. that. Yeah. There, there can be no compromise uh, uh, or action based on uh, Satan's creation, you know. So God has an original plan from the beginning for angels um, to have a female angel. So that will be completed. But no compromise can be done, such as uh, imagining a fallen human being used as a proxy uh, just to create the female angel. God has a plan and in time that will be known. But this is, a, I think, a result of um, you have to be seeing the body language as well as reading the text and understanding the real um, uh, moment where father could be playing or teasing or saying some things and it, it got put on print and it could be conceived of as literal but it can't be according to the principle literal at all okay <laughs> thank you Uh, yes, Jacinta, go ahead. Thank you, Mary and Doug, for mentioning that because I just feel that's true. You know, I had questions myself about why that would be brought up. Um, but uh, yeah, what what I wanted to say was when I first joined the church, uh, I was really fascinated uh, by the way that early Japanese members prayed. Um, like we had the IW, not the IW, but one of the missionaries came, first came to um, Australia, who was called Katsumi Date. And um, the way that he prayed, um, and, and, and a lot of other Japanese as well, um, really taught me something about prayer and also like the elements that uh, we have within us. Um, and one of them is the way we breathe. I noticed when um, uh, when that uh, person prayed, they would say father in Japanese, which I think is otosama. Is that right? Anyway, she was like, oh, otosama. And they're like really passionate. And they were like, and then they would like hold their breath. And then... Uh, and I was fascinated by this because I never heard anyone in Australia pray so passionately. Everyone's sort of like praying like la, 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 kind of very rote. You know, they're not very passionate Australians. I mean, not, sorry, that's a bit of a judgment, but anyway. Um, just uh, I just learned a lot from um, like just how to manage my own breath control to try and get in touch with my own heart because as a kind of a a white Australian repressed Catholic I just thought my heart was way down you know with under layers and layers of self-control and looking cool and everything like that so it was really I learned a lot just from that Japanese um uh, passionateness you know right there um in the prayer room and I'm so grateful that um that helped me get in touch with the god within me you know as i mean i saw god out there in nature and creation and everything but not so much in myself so i'm sort really of grateful for that thank you you just in
Uh, yes, Rex, go ahead. Oh, you just muted yourself. Just unmute again. Yeah, I just sent me um, a, a clarification in the beginning. Uh, Reverend Taka said that there would be a, a, a spiritual matching in champion. So I just want to, how it's going to happen? Is people going to apply or just inform ancestors to happen that way? Thank you. Reverend John, please explain. Yeah, there's there, there's a spiritual matching. Actually, the application uh, closed uh, uh, yesterday, uh, and uh, we had one person in, in Australia who's who's applied uh, for that. Uh, the, the window for it, in other words, when they announced it was happening, and when it was uh, applications closed, was very small. They didn't give a, a lot of time because they also changed the date from when it was happening in. in uh, to, to a different, brought it earlier. But yes, uh, there is an application process. There, there's also a, a cost involved. Uh, and, uh, 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 and then it's a, a matching between a physical person on earth and a spiritual person. Uh, and, uh, th and then that matching is carried out in Champion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, a bit, bit late for someone in Solomon's. Hopefully, next time when we uh, have more warning or more uh, advanced information, we can uh, help Solomon's <laughs> as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, just a reminder for myself, I think what I'm going to say now also is um, uh, just what Jacinta said about trying to be cool and calm and, you know, we want to have this image. But I think if we honestly share what we're feeling with God, frustration, anger, whatever it is, then the passion will come out, you know, and we do get stuck in this stereotype of how we should perform in front of a God. But I think if we get in touch with our real feelings and say, listen, mate, this is just not happening for me. What the heck is going on here? You know, and uh, just be who you really are. I mean, he's heard it all. And uh, we don't want to complain, but I think if we release those real emotions, then our passion will ignite, you know? Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, Catherine, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm not a singer, but one day I was sitting there and I was thinking, um, who on earth <clears throat> sings a song just for God, only for God? And I was about to have a shower. So I went to the shower and I thought, well, I'll sing a song to God. One voice said to me, you can't sing, you've got no clothes on. Another voice said, you came into this world with nothing, you live with nothing. And the other voice was going, you can't. And this, this battle was going on, in the, you know, one side and one side, and I thought, oh my goodness, look, I want to sing to God, and I am going to sing my song. And so I poured my heart out and sang Amazing Grace. And it was the most beautiful experience. I don't know how many tears were falling. I think it was more tears falling from the from my eyes than there was from the shower. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, this beautiful golden cloak came down and wrapped itself around me. And the love that embraced me was just so beautiful. That warmth and that feeling of God's love just embraced me. So it doesn't matter what you do. You know, if you want to do something for God, go ahead and do it. That's so beautiful. And I'm not a singer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. You're lucky there was no one to record. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, Kim, go ahead.
I just wanted to uh, thank Douglas for putting, uh, so this is Christmas as an earworm in my head for the last few <laughs> days. I can't get it out of my mind. Um, uh, yeah, the, the idea that God is, uh, God can relate to every person and is in every person uh, is very significant. Uh, the history of religion is, has always been to uh, um, separate, divide, um, group together in communities, isolated from each other, not communicating. And, uh, and yet God has a voice for everyone uh, according to where they are. And everyone has experiences uh, which may not necessarily align with our own experiences. So um, really, uh, you know, whenever people have experiences, I know people share on here sometimes things that I just can't relate to, but, um, you know, to be able to humbly listen to their experience and to not judge and to... Uh, um, and try to find, you know, where God might be working in that person's life or the ways that we can align ourselves with those things that we do share uh, is very important. If we're going to have a Chanil Gu Kingdom of Heaven on Earth, we can't have one organization or expect that everyone believes the same way we do. Um, and uh, so it's really, really important to, to try to develop that our fallen nature wants to resist that, but uh, to be able to have that open heart to to everyone around and to their experience and uh, and to the ways that God might be able to work uh, with them and through that work through us. So thank you. Yeah, so true. Thank you, Kim. Uh, actually, we're at that time again uh, where... We can offer our unison prayer so that many things to you know we heard today and we can pray about so i'll just share the screen and uh, let's pray together
Adieu, adieu, adieu. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. And see you tomorrow. Okay. Happy birthday, Kenji. Happy birthday to Kenji. We can sing him happy birthday. Yes. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Kenji. Happy birthday, dear 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 Kenji. Happy that's yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's an amazing connection. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Have a happy birthday. Thank you. Bye-bye, all. God bless. Bye. Bye.